Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM has released its latest transmission development plan for the period from 2022 to 2031. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss when it can and will be implemented. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What does this latest plan say and how much will it cost? Well, it's a 10-year plan and you know uh, ESCOM puts out this TDP every year. And this one really looks at changing the nature of the grid. And uh, it needs to... Uh, there needs to be a major investment in transmission lines, about 8,400 kilometers of new lines, high voltage lines over that 10 year period. Uh, and, and about 120, 119 large transformers that have to be installed onto the network as well. It will cost overall 178 billion in today's RAND terms. So it's a large budget. Um, and 145 billion of that is really about expansionary capital, not the repairs and the maintenance that also has to take place over the period. So it's a big plan, it's an ambitious plan, it's, it's got a big budget. It's part of this rolling uh, assessment that ESKIM does of what its grid needs are. Why is this investment so important to the future of the electricity system? Well, the future, as we know, is migrating from a coal-based system, a centralised system, very much in the northeast of the country, located uh, in Pumalanga mostly, also some in Limpopo province. So we really have this large uh, centralised system where the grid uh, has been built around, uh, fairly close to the two main load centres in South Africa. So Skarteng is the main load centre, the second main load centre is uh, KwaZulu-Natal. So now what we're going to see uh, as we integrate more renewable energy into the system, and this is being done for two imperatives, one for environmental, but mo more importantly in recent uh, times is for cost. It's the lowest cost. Electricity comes from wind and solar at the moment, and even when backed uh, by flexible generation plants to keep that what people call base load, even though that term is now a very controversial term, but to keep that profile of always on profile, still, even with those backups, uh, wind and solar led system is going to be the future cheapest because of the steep fall in uh, renewable energy prices over the last the decade and a bit. So we're going to need to have a migration in, this, in the system to where our best renewable resources are. The best acreage in South Africa for solar we know is in the Northern Cape. The best acreage for wind is mostly in the Eastern and the Western Cape. So we're going to see the southerly migration of the grid. And that's really why this investment plan is so important. It, it basically puts in motion the initial stages of that southerly migration of the grid. Of course, uh, Mpumalanga will still be a major generator of electricity well into well beyond this period, uh, and there will still be a lot of coal in the system into the 2030s. But we'll see this plan as, a, as starting that migration from north to south. Did the constraints to the grid feature at all during the most recent renewables procurement round? Yes, the, this was announced uh, this week. I mean, um, finally, after many years, nearly seven years, the last time we procured any uh, renewable electricity uh, through a centralised government procurement process was 2014. Those projects were only eventually uh, reached financial close in 2018 because Eskom, as we all know now, refused to sign the power purchase agreement. So these are the first new uh, megawatts that are going to be added under the new integrated resource plan because we also know that the risk mitigation projects which were, which were supposed to be the initial emergency response to the gap in the system has hit a number of legal and environmental snags so I think these may uh, may or may not we'll see what happens with the risk mitigation come on uh, earlier so we already see as as there, were, there was a big appetite for bidding um, over a hundred projects were bid uh, in the end, we've selected 25, and there's still a good chunk of that in the in the western, northern, and eastern Cape. I think those provinces are still quite well represented, but we can see a migration into the Free State and even into KwaZulu Natal. And part of the reason, and it was mentioned at the announcement, is that the, the grid capacity is no longer there. So there were even cheaper projects that were uh, available, but they weren't going to be able to evacuate power from those projects at this stage until the grid is strengthened. And they've also confirmed from now on the Northern Cape network is fully saturated and the Western Cape uh, network is almost at capacity. So unless Eskom makes some changes. So Eskom is looking at ways of releasing capacity in the short term, 
but I think until we do this massive uh, grid investment, there's going to be constraints in those key provinces of the Northern Cape, the Western Cape, and also the Eastern Cape. Does ESCOM have the financial and internal capacity to deliver this grid plan? Financially, they say that through the tariffs, uh, they have visibility uh, for the first five years of the rollout, which is the smaller portion of the rollout. They still need to scale up massively. They, they were doing in the previous five-year period about 300 kilometers a year of transmission line. They need to get at least to 500 kilometers over, the, over this period from next year to, to 2026 uh, to meet, uh, to get anywhere close to meeting the target. So it's a big scale up in, uh, in both line rollout and transformation rollout, rollout. And they seem to have some visibility of the funding there. Beyond that, there's no visibility. And we know that we've hit this other brick wall between uh, Eskom and NERSA again around the tariff methodology this time. So we haven't even started evaluating or adjudicating the tariffs for the next financial year. And if NERSA will uh, eventually start, does an adjudication, and we don't know on what basis it's going to be done because they want a new methodology used which doesn't exist, but if they do an adjudication, it will only be for one year. And this plan obviously goes in, uh, for, uh, it's got a much longer horizon, so there's going to be a bit of a, a lack of visibility. So definitely on the funding side, there's problems, even though in the short term there seems to be some money in the kitty for grid expansion and there's a lot of work going on under the just energy transition strategy and that's why the ceo went to cop to try and plead the case partly to get the money for the grid so maybe that will release some additional financial firepower but on the capacity side there are a lot of concerns does eskim have the capacity to run this large project we've seen how poorly it's performed on the bigger mega scale coal projects but generally it's been under investing in the grid for many years it's lost a lot of skills. There are a lot of concerns about the fact that th these plans don't have firm timelines alongside them. Uh, so there's concern, not only about the financial side of Eskom's ability to deliver this plan, but also its internal uh, planning ability and execution ability. Are there any other risks to the plan? Yeah, and I think outside of Eskom, there are major risks to the plan. One, uh, servitude acquisition which is partly in Eskom's hands. Obviously, they have to run the process. Uh, that's, that can take many, many years. And uh, then you're cutting across, because these are long lines, many, many farm boundaries. And uh, it just takes one farmer to object. <laughs> and uh, you've got a gap and you're landing up at court. They don't have the same expropriation powers of, for land that they used to have. So that is a major risk. And it has been a risk for many, many years. And it's something that we've tried to uh, navigate through by creating these corridor concepts and creating uh, ease of uh, getting environmental e authorizations in these corridors, yet it still remains a major problem, the servitude acquisition. Also outside of Eskom is because of this economic drift South Africa has been in and the low investment in infrastru infrastructure over the last 10 years and more, we basically have seen a decimation of our manufacturing and uh, construction industries over that period. So w these are designated products, power lines and things like that. So the government wants these to be made locally. But, and the construct of that and the construction industry, that supply chain has really been weakened over the stop start period uh, of the last 10 years where there haven't been consistent spend from Eskom. And uh, it's, it's a major problem and it's a, it's a major risk to the program. So serv outside of Eskom, servitude, acquisition and then the supply chain into delivering both the, the power lines and the transformers is, is, a, is a concern. What else needs to be done to ensure the grid is in place? Well I think obviously there's this big unbundling of the transmission in the, uh, uh, part of Eskom and that's an important step. I think once they're more independent and have their own board and have their own balance sheet and have their own program and are able to raise things and not a bit unencumbered from uh, the generation part of the business, which is really dragging the whole of Eskom down at the, uh, at the moment. Uh, that, that's an important part of the process, but obviously a lot of management attention, and I didn't mention that as a risk, but also has to go into that restructuring when you should actually be put, putting shovels in the ground and lines in the air. So it's a, it's a, that, that is a, a big risk, I think, as, as well. And uh, I think what can be done 
uh, is that maybe we have to look outside of ESKIM, both for finances as well as for the capacity to implement. Um, at the moment, it's, it, is a, it is a natural monopoly business. So we could look at models which are build, operate, and transfer type models where the private sector takes on certain lines, especially in these key high quality acreage areas of the Northern Cape. Or is, is there not an opportunity to concession aspects, maybe uh, bring in the private sector on certain specific projects just for a 20, 25 year horizon, hand back to the transmission system operator uh, after that period. Uh, obviously they'll want to return, it will add some cost to the system potentially, but the cost of not having the grid, we're seeing that every day uh, and it's, it's, it's going to become a bigger and bigger constraint. Much like uh, there was a warning this week, much like the generation uh, capacity where we hit that, um, that wall in around 2008, with after Eskom warned us back in the 1990s that that would be the date when we needed new capacity, we didn't add it. Again, the warning is we need to add this grid capacity or we're going to ha face a very similar crisis. This time not led so much from the generation side, but from the lack of grid. Thank you. That's the second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.